Thank you, Hamdi. That was terrific. Um, you heard me a few minutes ago talking as a general manager of Times Conferences. Uh, now I'd like to talk a little bit uh, about myself as an editor. Uh, I'm not a food expert, uh, and I'm not a farmer, uh, or a nutritionist, or an environmental scientist, or a chef. But I've been in journalism for 40 years, a magazine editor for most of them, and what I'm pretty good at is noticing change. If you'd met me in 1983, when I was an editor at Harper's Magazine, I would have told you that the Soviet Empire would be dead in 15 years. You might have thought I was crazy. That army, those nukes, that oil, how could it collapse? Uh, but I traveled and I talked to a lot of people and I closely observed things. As it turned out, I was wrong. It would be gone in six years, not 15, thanks to a few accelerators like uh, Pope John Paul II and Ronald Reagan and especially uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, but it was gone. So change happens. If you'd met me in the year 2000, uh, when I was editor at the New York Times Magazine, I would have told you that gay marriage would be the law of the land by 2020. If we'd met in a bar, you would have probably had the bartender cut me off. Uh, but the same deal. I talked to people and I'd seen things. You know, and I might be wrong again. The Supreme Court could make a decision, a decision I would find a just decision, and make the right to a gay marriage a federal one in the next year or two. But I'm feeling pretty certain that the last state to approve gay marriage, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be Mississippi, uh, will come around in six years or so. Change has a feel. It has a shape. It has a rhythm. And if you're in my line of work, uh, you come to recognize it. Change is painfully slow at first. There's resistance, apprehension, infighting, confusion. And then change suddenly quickens. And then it seems inevitable, and people wonder why it didn't happen sooner. By the middle of this century, 2050 or so, the food system is going to be very different from the one we have now. We will be growing food in a different way, preparing food in a different way, and eating in a different way. The question really is how do we get there? We are at the beginning when change seems painful but we are no longer at the very beginning. Uh, read what Mark Bittman et al. wrote in the Washington Post on Sunday about the need for a national food policy. To me, it seems so commonsensical. What mother wouldn't want that for her kids? It wouldn't have seemed that way 10 years ago. That's how change works. Mark Bittman, a friend and colleague and a shaper of this conference, will be speaking shortly. Michael Pollan and Ricardo Salvador, two of, the, of Mark's co-authors of that essay, will be speaking tomorrow. Coming after Mark is a panel on what makes for healthy eating. After that, there will be a panel of chefs discussing what they think is their role outside the kitchen in the broader food system. I don't know if you saw it, but there was an essay in the Wall Street Journal a week or two ago that argued that chefs have no place outside the kitchen, that they would be better, uh, do better to just keep uh, quiet and stick to cooking. I, I don't know. Would you want an architect not worrying about how their buildings were engineered or constructed? Would you want your doctors not worrying about the side effects of pills they prescribe? Um, there are some things we're not going to get around to talking about um, in the next couple of days. Uh, the food system is so complicated uh, that there just isn't going to be time to discuss all the aspects of what go into change. Uh, so we won't be talking about uh, animal welfare in a panel, uh, though we probably should. We won't be discussing the oceans and the seas, though we probably really should be talking about that too. Um, Dan Barber, the chef of Blue Hill, We'll be speaking during our dinner this evening. Blue, Blue Hill has, in more than one sense, an organic relationship to the Stone Barn Center. 
Um, the Stone Barn Center uh, is a very, very special place to me personally and, I, and increasingly to the Hudson Valley and to the country at large. Um, for more on uh, what the center does uh, and what it's up to, let me bring on uh, my friend and leader, <laughs> uh, Jill Eisenbarger, the executive director of the center and really the driving force of this place. Jill.